In this presentation, we will work a problem on notes receivable and accounts receivable, focusing primarily on notes receivable. We will be transferring from accounts receivable to notes receivable, giving us a good example of the difference between the two. The information that we will be using is on the left side. We're going to put that information into the worksheets on the right side. This will be used to, in order to calculate the uh, interest. Then we're going to go over here, we're going to post that information as needed to the general journal. Now, well, we'll record that, I should say, to the general journal. And then post it to a little worksheet here, rather than the full uh, general ledger. This worksheet being the beginning trial balance, our adjustments, and the ending trial balance. The beginning trial balance being in balance by seeing that the debits are positive numbers, credits are negative numbers, debits minus the credits if we sum them up is zero meaning debits minus the credits add up to zero or debits equal the credits so this zero means we're in balance net income is going to be this uh twenty thousand only so there's the net income of the twenty thousand we're eliminating many accounts just focusing in on what we need we're going to be looking at the accounts receivable here and we'll be looking at these notes receivable, which we are going to break out into a separate note receivable for each uh, receivable that we will be having, each client that will have a note receivable. This is a common way to do it. When we put it to the financial statements note, it will all be probably combined together into one category called notes receivable. And some companies might just have one category on the trial balance as well and then break it out in a similar way as we do to the subsidiary ledger for accounts receivable, which we'll take a look at in a second to the right, uh, that will just basically be a worksheet breaking out that information. In some companies, I actually prefer to, if there's not too many of them, <laughs> to break out the notes receivable uh, into separate accounts so that we can track them on, uh, on the trial balance and then combine them together on the financial statements into one account or one grouping of accounts called notes receivable. Okay, so here's the uh, accounts receivable here, meaning we are owed 37,500 from customers. If we want the detail of that, we're not gonna look at the general ledger uh, and this problem, but that would only give the detail by date. We are gonna look at the subsidiary ledger, breaking that number out by customer. These are unusual names, but these are the customers, just the simple names here. And these are the people that owe us money, 6,002, 2,120. And if we add all those up, including the other, uh, then it adds up to this 37,500 that matching then that backing up and supporting the accounts receivable account So now let's go back over and let's see what we have We're gonna start off with the prior year. So we're gonna really be working in uh, Starting in, in February. We're gonna jump forward in time. That's just the nature of these types of problems These are a little bit more difficult in that for that reason because in the accounting department They're not things we do from a day-to-day -day process uh, and therefore, when we look at a problem, we've got to like jump through the whole year so we can do these calculations of interest. Uh, so that's what we'll do. So be aware that uh, when, when we do this in practice, we're not going to be doing these type of accounts every day. They will be things that we'll have to do when they become due. And we'll start off here with the prior time period, the December of the last year. And we'll do some calculations because we want to see what happens in terms of the adjusting entry. Um, and just give an example of that. And then we'll move forward into the current year and calculate interest and then pay off the notes receivable. So the first thing is gonna be the prior year. We're not gonna actually put the journal entry related to this in place. What we're gonna do is show how the adjusting entry would be in place and uh, what is the result on the trial balance from it and then move forward from there. So on 12-17, uh, we have 60 days, 7% note receivable giving D company uh, a time extension uh, on pays due uh, accounts receivable on path that's probably should be past due accounts receivable so we're going to give them an extension on 12 7 so what happened is they had accounts receivable they didn't pay us for whatever reason we gave them an extension of time but now they have to pay us interest for that extension of time so we're going to calculate the interest then using this little worksheet here so this will calculate the interest we're going to say that we had 1000 or 14,100 principal 7% interest because it's formatted here already. I can just type 7 gives us 7% If we were to use a trustee calculator, I would typically say 14100 times 0 0.07 7% 0 0.07 will make it percentage 7% 
987. That percentage, by the way, is in the home tab in the numbers group and percentage. So if, you, if the cell does something funny, always check the type of formatting of that cell. We will then multiply this out. I'm going to take this number times that number. Do that with a formula in Excel by saying equals pointing to that 14,100 multiplying times that 7% or C7 times C8 and enter. That gives us the 987. Then I'm going to divide that by the number of days in a year. We're going to make this nice and even. Notice that we could say there's two months. 60 days is about two months. But we're going to say how many days are in a year. And the reason we're doing this is because the 7% means 7% a year. We only have a 60 day time period. So we, know, we don't usually talk in terms of, of months. We don't usually say, well, what's the, what's the 60 day interest rate? Because the rate would be really small that way. So the convention that we use whenever we say interest typically means interest for a year, which we then have to uh, calculate out the interest for a uh, whatever time period we're using. Um, and in this case 60 days. So if this is going to be the interest we would have to pay if it were for an entire year, how can we break it out to 60 days? I'm going to break it out into a daily interest rate and then multiply times 60 days. The way to do that is to say this equals how many days in a year. You would say 365. I'm going to make it even, which is 12 months times 30. So we're going to assume, in other words, all months have 30 days rather than 28 or 30 or 31. And enter. So then we got the 360. Now we're going to take the interest divided by the number of days. So this equals this 987 uh, interest per year divided by 360 days gives us 2 uh, and 74 cents per day. Then we're just going to multiply that times that 60 days. So 60. And we'll take that 274 times the 60 by saying equals pointing to that 274 in C11, multiplying times that 60 in C12, giving us the 164.50. Now I'm just gonna round that by putting that same number into this cell with a formula, equals this 164. It just took off the 50 cents, why? And, and added it, you know, 165 instead of 164.50. How? By going to the home tab, numbers, and I just took off the decimal. So note that Excel still sees it as 164.50, but shows the 165 in this cell. So be careful with rounding. So that's going to be this calculation. Now note we could have got to the same number of a couple different ways, and you may see these other different ways. You might think that this calculation is a little long, but it works, and I think it's the easiest way to kind of see this. Uh, you could do it with months, however, as well. This problem probably works best with days. But just note, you'll see it in different ways. So, I mean, we could say if there's 987 interest per year, and there's 60 days, that's two months. So instead of breaking it by day, let's break it out by the number of interest per month. Or divide it by 12 months in a year. 8, 82.25 for 12 months. And uh, each month, I'm sorry, each month times two uh, for 60 days, two months, 30, 30, 60. So that would give us the 164.50. So another way we can calculate it, we, we can also take uh, the ratio. So we could take uh, the, the 60 days divided by 360 or the 0.1666, which is the same as saying if we said there's two months divided by 12 months the point once that same point 166 times the interest for the entire year the 974 times 970 i'm sorry 987 that's going to be that 164. so we're really just using a ratio to me to to, to do that ratio calculation isn't as intuitively uh, easy to think about as thinking about it as breaking out the interest per day or per month and then multiplying times the number of months or days we are using. Now that would be the interest for the entire year. What we want to have now is the interest as of the cutoff date because we're going to say that we're doing the financial statements as of 1231 and we've earned interest that we have not yet received and therefore we need to record that fact as of the end of the time period. 
So even though we're not gonna get paid for 60 days, we only have a few days, half a month or so, to get to that 31 days. So let's do the same calculation one more time, but now just calculate till the end of the, the year. So it's gonna start off the same, 17, 14, 100 times 7%, just gonna do this again. This would be interest for a year, remember. This cell, which is D7 times the 7%, gives us the interest, but that's interest for the entire year. We're only looking for like half a month. And then we're gonna, we're gonna divide that by the number of days in a year, which equals 12 times 30, 12 months times 30 days, or 360. There's really 365, we're rounding to 360. If we divide that out, we're gonna say equals to 987 divided by the 360, gives us the interest per day to 74. Same calculation we just did. However, instead of 60 days, we only have a few days till the 31st. Now we're gonna be a little bit more exact here and, you know, and try to get the exact number of days. We could count it out on our fingers, right? 17, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20 or do a subtraction problem, which would look something like equals uh, 31 minus 17. And that would not include the day 17, and I'm gonna include it. So we're gonna say plus one. And if, if you're looking at a problem that, di that breaks it down to a day or so, that's probably gonna be where the difference may be at. If you're off by a little bit, then it may be that you're not including or are including the, that day. You wanna be careful uh, with that. That could be where you're or the differences. Okay, then we're gonna multiply this out. This equals the 274 times this 15 days. And then I'm gonna round it just again, just by putting that same cell down here, which is already formatted for us in order to take off the 13 cents or equals that 41.13. So $41 uh, dollars about is the interest. What that means is that we're gonna earn $41 as of the end of the year, the end of December 31st, of the 165 that we're gonna get paid at the end of 60 days. So we earned $41 as of the end of the year. We haven't yet got paid for it. We have recorded the journal entry for it. Let's take a look at it. So if we go to the trial balance, we can see that we have this uh, $41 in interest receivable. Why? Because at the end of last year, uh, what happened is we said that people owe us money that we haven't received yet for the receivable, for what we've earned on it for those a couple days. We earned it already by loaning the money out. So we debited the interest receivable and we credit interest revenue. Why isn't there anything in interest revenue? Because the interest revenue has been closed out to the, uh, the interest revenue has been closed out to retained earnings as of the end of last year. And so this year, uh, it's not there because it closed out and we're starting with a zero balance. So now we're gonna go into the current year. We're gonna to jump to the current year and we're gonna record some of these transactions. Now we're in the current year, we're gonna record this stuff out. So on 214, receive payment from the company of both principal and interest. Make sure to take into account the interest receivable on the trial balance. Okay, so now we're gonna say that they paid us. So here's, uh, the, they paid us the 14100 plus the full 165. So let's see what the journal entry would look like then. We're gonna go back over here. We can ask our questions we would typically ask and that would include, is cash affected? I'm gonna put the date here, which is 214. We're gonna say, yeah, we got cash. Cash is going up. Cash has a debit balance. We're gonna make it go up by doing the same thing to it. In this case, another debit. So I'm gonna copy cash, right click and copy. Put that up in J5, right click and paste. One, two, three. Now the amount's gonna be if I scroll back over, the 14,100 plus the 165, the full amount of interest for the entire time period. We already earned this over here. We haven't received it, however. So the 14,100 plus the interest 165. I'm gonna scroll back over here. Sorry if I did that way too fast, but we're gonna say this equal. I didn't want to forget the number. 14,100 plus the 165. And there's the 14265. Uh, 14265. That's how much we're going to get. Now, then, now we got to take it off the books, uh, meaning this note receivable. That's what's received. It's only 141 because it doesn't show the interest yet. Part of the interest is showing here, but not all of it. But in any case, this needs to go off the books. It's a debit balance. We need to make it go down by doing the opposite thing to it, which in this case is a credit. 
So I'm going to copy that. We're going to paste that in J6, right click and paste one, two, three. It's already indented here for us. So I'm going to leave that. We're going to go over here. I'm going to put the credit to represent the credit with a negative 14,100. Then we have this interest receivable. We just saw that on the books. We need to take that off. That represents a receivable for what was earned last time period of the 165 interest. So we need to take that off the books because it's now been received and it's 41, it's a debit balance. We need to do the opposite thing to it to make it go down, which is a credit. So we're gonna copy this in S13, right click and copy. Put that in J7, right click and paste. One, two, three. The amount's gonna be in the credit side in L7. We're gonna put negative 41. So there we have that. Now the rest of it then is gonna be uh, the interest receivable. That'll be the difference. We can think of it as the 165 minus the 41. That we, so we receive this interest receivable is what we recorded as we earned before. Or we can just take the difference between the whole thing, the debits minus the credits, should be that same difference. So uh, let's do that, that plug formula first. I'm going to use a plug formula by saying negative sum. And then just highlight this whole thing. This is a positive number. These are negatives, so the positive minus the negative, and then flip the sign. That's why there's a negative sum. So it's going to be boom. So we're going to take these two numbers, in other words, 14,141 minus the 14,265. Now we could have taken just so uh, we could have taken the 165 minus the 41, gives us that same 121, meaning total interest was 165, 41 of it was earned last time period. 124 then earned this time period. That then is going to go to the current income statement account of interest receivable. Interest receivable is a credit balance account. It being revenue, it always goes up in the credit direction as is happening here. I'm going to right click and copy. We're going to paste that in J8. Right click and paste. One, two, three. Now we're going to record this out, not to the general ledger, but to this little worksheet because it's a perfect little worksheet for the number of, of uh, journal entries we'll have to see exactly what is going on. So we'll post this first, cash, cash is there, cash is here. We're going to post it to U5, U5 equals, point to that 14, 265. It's going to be bring the 25, 164 up by 14, 265 to 39, 429. Then we have the note receivable for D company here. We're going to post it to the note receivable on the trial balance there. Uh, we're going to post it in U12. Within U12, we're going to say equals and point to that 14,100, bringing the 14,100 down in the credit direction to zero. Then we're going to record this interest receivable. We're going to record it here, interest receivable in cell U13. So within U13, we will say equals, point to that 41, bringing the 41 balance down by 41 to zero. Finally, we'll post the interest receivable. Note we're out of balance, of course, by that 124 here until we record the last component. Interest receivable, which is here on the trial balance. We are in cell U18. We're gonna say equals, point to that 124, bring the balance from zero up by 124 in the credit direction, putting us back in balance. It also brings up net income. So note that net income is increasing by only the interest portion earned this time period, although we're receiving the full interest, the 165 of interest, 41 of it having been earned last year, although it had not been received last year. Okay, so we're going to scroll back over and see what we have next. 3-2, 127-day note giving MI company an extension on past due accounts receivable. So same idea here. This company owes us money, MI, and uh, they're not going to pay us yet. And we're going to say, okay, well, they're not going to pay us, but we're going to charge you interest then, moving it from the accounts receivable to the notes receivable. That initial journal entry being a very simple one, but uh, then we're going to have to calculate interest on it. In other words... We're going to go back over here. We're going to make a journal entry for this on 3-2. And we're going to say it's in accounts receivable. Here's the 37.5 people owe us. Here's MI in the subsidiary ledger. They owe us 6,200 of that 37,500. We need to bring that down, not because they paid us, not because it's bad debt, not because they're not going to pay us, 
but because we're going to transfer it to a note receivable and charge interest for it due to the lateness of the payment. So what we're going to do is there's the accounts receivable. It's going to go down. So we're going to do the opposite thing to it, which is a credit. So I'm going to copy the receivable, right click and copy. I'm going to put it on the bottom in the credit. So I'm going to put it on the bottom in J11, right click and paste. One, two, three. I'm going to put that in the credit column over here. It's going to be for that 6,200. going to represent the credit with a negative 6200. Then we're going to have a debit here in K10. Within K10, we could just type it in there. I'm going to do a formula though because that's how I like to do it. So we're going to say a negative of that number. It'll take that number, flip the sign, make it a positive. Okay, now we just need to know what that account will be. And it will be notes receivable. Note that within the notes receivable, we have a separate note receivable for every company that we have a note for. And again, like we said before, that's a common practice to do to have that in the trial balance, a different account. It won't be that way on the financial statements. It'll be grouped in one account and some companies may only group it in one account on the trial balance. It's up to the company. However, it will typically be supported by the subsidiary ledger, which we'll put together after we record the journal entry. Uh, in a similar way as this subsidiary ledger. So note, this subsidiary ledger is for the receivable and this list of accounts is another way of tracking the receivables that are notes receivable by who owes us money. Whereas we can also have a subsidiary type ledger for the notes receivable, which can also be used to calculate the interest that will be due on the notes as we'll see. Okay, so we're gonna copy that and that's gonna be the debit in J10, right click and paste one, two, three. Let's record this. Here's the notes receivable for MI that we're gonna record. Here it is on the trial balance. And we're gonna record that in U9. So within U9, we're gonna say equals. But we're gonna to point to that 6,200, bringing that zero balance up by 6,200 to 6,200. Then we're gonna record the other side. Accounts receivable has a credit here. Accounts receivable up top here. We're going to record that in the cell U6. So within U6, we'll say equals and point to 6,200 credit, bringing that 37,500 down in the credit direction by 6,200 to 31,100. Now we also want to record this 6,200 on the subsidiary ledger. So remember that they owe us here 6,200, breaking this number out down into who owes us the money. This person no longer owes us the money. The subsidiary ledger does not match at this point in time until we say that this person doesn't owe us. We're basically just posting the same information, that same journal entry here. So I'm gonna say this equals that 6,200, bringing the 6,200 bound down by 6,200 to zero. Now, if we add them all up, all the customers that owe us money, 3,200, uh, 31,300, is the same as that 31,300 there. Note, no effect on net income from this transaction. Th this was from the prior transaction. So no effect on net income. All we did was move it from, from one receivable to another receivable, from a more short-term receivable to a more long-term receivable, from an accounts receivable to a note receivable, from a receivable that doesn't charge interest to one which does. Okay, enough of that. We're gonna go back over here and we're gonna record the interest calculation now. We're not gonna do anything with it yet because we haven't earned any interest, but this is what we expect to earn in interest over the time period of this note. So we're gonna say that it's for 6,200. The rate is 7%. Once again, if I just type in seven, it will be formatted due to the format of Excel found in the home tab numbers group and the percentage button. So then if we go down here, we multiply this out, the 6,200 times 7% will equals this 6,200 times the asterisk, so C18 times 7% in C19, giving us the 434. Now we're gonna break this out into the number of days because remember, 7% means 7% a year, 434 then would be the interest for the entire year if we had the loan for the entire year, which we do not, we will only have it out for uh, 120 days. So we need to break this out to 120 days rather than interest of a year of 434. So and it, I would think about doing that by first breaking it out into days, which would be 
12 months times 30 days. Whoop. What happened? Okay, 12 months times 30 days or 360. Again, that's a that's an estimate. It would be 365. And then equals this 434 divided by the 360, giving us the $1.24. Note that this could be rounded. In Excel, if I go to the home tab, numbers, and increase decimals, it's really not that same number. But as long as we use this cell in the calculation, Excel will use the exact number, even though it only shows, I'm going to go on and remove that, the non-exact number. So just be aware of those little tricks in Excel. If you don't use Excel, you kind of want it, you may want to use a ratio, which will be more exact. But this will be exact because this cell represents the real number, even though it only shows 121 rounded to the nearest penny. Okay, so then we're going to say that the number of days is going to be 120. And if there's $1.21 for 120 days, we multiply that out. We're going to say this 121 times 120 days gives us 144.67. I'm going to then round that by just putting it in the cell, which is already formatted for us, saying equals that 144.67, rounding it to 145. Okay, so let's do that same calculation a couple different ways just to practice our, our interest calculation. We could have done this by months. So notice we have a 120 day note. If we divide that by 30, four months. So we could say, okay, well, what if we had this 434 for a year divided by 12 months means 36.166 per month times four. That would give us that same number here. We can also use the ratio calculations that a lot of the uh, textbooks would like to use, which would say that we have 120 days over 360 days or 0.33%, which could also be thought of as four months over 12 months, 0.33%. We take that times this interest, 434 per year, 434 we get that same 144.67. So uh, a couple ways you can calculate that. Again, you, this is the most intuitive way to calculate it to me, but you can see it any different way. You might see it any different way and you kind of got to figure out you know, your method and, and reconcile to whatever method's being used and shown. Okay, so we're not going to do anything with this number yet because uh, it's not due yet. We're just going to uh, keep that until it becomes due and then we'll do something with that number. Next, we've got uh, 317, 30 day, 7% note giving a company an extension on past due accounts receivable. So same type of thing is happening here. We're gonna say that a company, scrolling back over, and of course it's the same thing, that's the type of problem we're doing here, but this is a company, has accounts receivable included in that number. It's become past due. We're not giving up on it yet. What we're gonna do is say a company, we're gonna give you a note rather than accounts receivable. We're gonna charge interest on the note. So we're just going to move that 3,800 from a receivable to another receivable from accounts receivable to notes receivable. So to do that, we're just going to go over here and we're going to say this is going to be on and we're going to take it out of accounts receivable this being a debit balance we're going to make it go down doing the opposite thing to it a credit so i'm going to copy the accounts receivable in s6 right click and copy put that on the bottom so we're in j14 right click and paste one two three then we're going to put the credit will be for how much is it for three thousand eight hundred negative 3,800 for the credit. Then we have a debit of something in K13. I'm gonna do that by saying negative of that number, taking that number and flipping the sign. We could just type it in there, but I think it's better to use the formula and therefore we'll do so. And then we're gonna indent this cell in J14. Home tab, alignment, increase indenting. You could double click and just put the space bar three times or not do it at all and it's not a big deal. Okay. And then we just need to know what this account will be. It's gonna be notes receivable. 
Notes receivable for a company is right there. It's still in the green, it's still a receivable, still has a debit balance, it's going up in the debit direction by doing the same thing to it, another debit. So S11, right click and copy. We're gonna put that up top in J13, right click and paste. One, two, three. Then we'll post this out. Here's the note receivable. We're gonna post that out here. We're gonna be in U11. So within U11, we're gonna say equals and point to that 3,800 and enter. And then in the accounts receivable here, that's gonna be up in U6, there's something in it. Therefore, we will double click on it, go to the end of it, say plus, then point to that uh, accounts receivable and enter. Bring the balance down to 27,500. We also need to record it over here in the subsidiary ledger. So there's the accounts receivable. We need to record it here in Y21 to show that a company doesn't owe us the receivable for accounts receivable, but for notes receivable now. So we're gonna say equals, point to that 3,800 and enter. So now if we go down here, the accounts receivable went down. If we add up all the people that owe us money, it adds up to 27,500. That then now tying out to what's on the trial balance, 27,500. We're gonna scroll back over here and we're gonna, we're gonna calculate the interest then on this number. And note that this worksheet is kind of like a subsidiary ledger over here. So once again, note that you could just have one account here called notes receivable that would then be supported by a subsidiary ledger or worksheet similar to the accounts receivable being supported by this subsidiary ledger. Or you can break it out. Again, if there's not too many of them, I kind of like to break it out and see it on the trial balance and then group them together when creating the financial statements into one notes receivable account. Okay, so we'll do that calculation for interest. We're not going to do anything with it yet. It's not going to matter until we get the payment. And remember, that's really kind of tricky for a lot of people when we first record these. Because you'll see a problem and it says 30 days interest note. Uh, you know, there's a lot going on here. And it's like, well, really all we got to do is, you know, debit accounts receivable and credit notes receivable. What do we do with the interest and the number of days? Why do we have that information? Well, we have that information for when we get the payment. <laughs> to know how much we're going to earn on it but we, we don't do anything with it until time passes because this represents earning revenue over time okay so we're going to re, we're going to calculate this so it's going to be three thousand eight hundred and once again it's another seven percent note and the seven percent is formatted for us already home tab numbers percentage is how that is formatted i'm going to underline it go into the home tab font group underline and then we'll multiply this out. Remember, this is for an entire year, 7% for a year, that's the convention, equals 3,800 times that 7%, giving 2,266 uh, for the entire year. But we don't have the entire year, we only have 30 days, one month. So I'm gonna break it out into interest, not per year, but per day, and then multiply it times the number of days, 30. So how many days in a year? We're gonna say 12 times 30, or an even 360. I'm gonna underline that, home tab, font, underline. Divide that out, equals the 266 per year, divided by 365 days in a year, giving 0.74 cents, 74 cents about per uh, day. So then how many days? We said uh, 30 days, 30 days. So 30 days, I'm gonna underline that, home tab, font, underline, multiply it out, 0.74 times 30 days, 0.74 per day times 30 days, or equals that 0.74 in D22 times 30 days, D23, and enter. 2217, I'm gonna round it now. This cell already being formatted, just saying equals, point to that 2217 and 22 being the answer. Let's, once again, just run through, we're just gonna practice our interest calculations here. So we could see this a couple different ways. We got this, this 266 per year. We could say, well, uh, there's 12 months in a year. So 266 divided by 12 would be 22, 0.166 per month times 30 days is one month times one would be that same number. 
We can also use our ratios. We can say that if there's, um, if, th if we're talking about 30 days uh, compared to divided by over 360 days in a year would be 0 0.0833, which is the same as saying one month over 12 months equivalent ratios would be 0 0.0833 times this 266 per year, 266 gives us the 22166 uh, again. This is the most intuitive way for me, typically with months if I'm allowed to do so, but days if we're getting more specific. Ratios are often seen by uh, textbooks and so you just wanna be aware of them. Okay, we're not gonna do anything with that now. We're gonna do something with that when we receive the money. Next one, we're gonna say that uh, for two, a company dishonored her note and did not pay. Uh, interest is recorded on the, the note at this time and the balance due is adjusted back into accounts receivable. So now we're saying that uh, a company didn't pay us. So we're gonna go back over here and we're gonna say, okay, now they didn't pay us. And what we try to do is, is give them an extension and charge the interest on it and we still didn't get paid. So now we're gonna take the note has expired and we didn't get paid for it. We're gonna put it back into accounts receivable so that we can still track that they owe us money even though the time period has passed. So we're gonna scroll back over here and we're gonna say, when did this happen on four, <laughs> like it was four, uh, 16 was it? Let's check it, let's check it. It's on four, two. So on 4-2, we're gonna say that we had this note receivable from a company that's not going to be paid. We're gonna put it back in to accounts receivable. So we might wanna think about, well, what did we, we didn't get any cash, is cash affected? No. What did we get? Well, we're really just putting it back into the receivable. So uh, it's gonna have to go back up again. So here's a, it says a debit balance. We're gonna make it go up by doing the same thing to it, which is another debit. So let's start with that. I'm gonna copy the accounts receivable. Right click and copy, put that on top in J16. Right click and paste, one, two, three. Now before thinking about the amount, uh, let's go to the other component here, and that's gonna be the fact that we need that the accounts receivable here uh, to go off the book, the notes receivable, uh, rather, I should say. And it's on the books for 3,800. It needs to go back down to zero because we're moving it out of there into the accounts receivable. So I'm gonna right click on that, copy that. It's gotta go down with a credit. So we're gonna put that underneath in J17. Right click and paste, one, two, three. I'm gonna indent that, home tab, alignment, increase the indenting. Put that in the credit column in L17 with the amount of negative 3,800. Now, uh, that's gonna be not the amount that we put in the receivable because we've earned revenue here and we've earned interest revenue at this point. So we're gonna record the revenue as well. It's gonna be down here, interest revenue, revenue having a credit balance that only goes up in the credit correction direction. <laughs> and we're gonna increase it by doing the same thing to it, another credit. So we'll copy S18, right click and copy the revenue. Put that in G18, right click and paste one two three then go into the home tab alignment and increasing the indenting let's see what that revenue was if we scroll back over here we calculated it, it to be about 22 dollars so that's going to be our credit amount 22 dollars in revenue in l18 i'm going to put a negative 22 therefore the debit to accounts receivable will include the original 3800 plus the 22 or 3822 I'm gonna do that with our sum function, our negative sum function. I call this the plug function negative, S-U-M. Double click that sum function. You could move this out of the way if you want by grabbing it and putting it up there and then highlight those four and enter. So now of course, if we highlight the whole thing, it adds up to zero or the debit's 3,022 and the credit's also adding up to 3,022. Okay, so let's record this out. Now here's the accounts receivable in the journal entry. We're gonna record that to the accounts receivable up here in the trial balance. Something's in the center cell, so we're gonna double click on it, go to the end of it, and say plus, point to that 3,822 in the receivable, bringing the balance up to 35,122. 
Then we have the notes receivable in uh, A, uh, so that will be here. Notes receivable. We want to be in U13. Uh, Double clicking on it, going to the end of it, and plus, and then pointing to that 3,800, bringing the balance down to zero. Then we're going to record the interest receivable here. So the interest receivable is here on the trial balance. Double clicking on U18 and going to the end, plus pointing to that 22 and enter. So that brings the balance up by the interest receivable. We are recording revenue for the receivable or the interest earned even though we haven't uh, earned it yet. Notice this, I'm sorry, it's this interest revenue. I've been saying interest receivable, not a receivable. <laughs> this isn't this isn't an asset, it's interest revenue increasing the net income. Okay, so now we're gonna record uh, the same amount for the accounts receivable in the subsidiary ledger. So the subsidiary ledger, in other words, is out of balance, it's red, 31.3, not matching the 35.122, it should be matching, and therefore we're gonna record uh, this amount for a company so a is right here i'm going to put that back on the books so in x22 we're just basically recording the same uh, entry over here so in x22 equals and we're going to point to that 3822 and enter putting us back in balance bringing the balance up here 35 122 there matching 35 122 here next transaction 6-2, where we say that MI company does not pay the note due. Interest is recorded on the note at the time and balance due is adjusted back into accounts receivable. So we've got the same uh, the same type of situation for uh, the MI company uh, not paying us. So we're going to put it back into the accounts receivable. We can see that the original amount was uh, 6200 We took out of accounts receivable, put it into notes receivable. We then generated revenue of 145 of interest revenue. Therefore, the 6200 plus the 145 is what's going to have to now go back into accounts receivable. So this is going to be 6 2 I'm going to remember that first this time. We're going to say over here on I-19, 6 2 Actually, probably should be on I-20, 6 2 and we're going to say that the accounts receivable is going to go back up. So accounts receivable is going to go up because this company is not paying us that 6002 Going to go out of the notes receivable here into accounts receivable, back to accounts receivable. So accounts receivable has a debit balance. We need to make it to go up by doing the same thing to it, another debit. So I'm going to right click and copy. Scroll down. We're going to put that in J20. Right click and paste. One, two, three. Now remember the amount is going to be for this 6,200 plus the 145. So let's see if we can remember that. Equals the 6,200 plus the 145 is uh, 6,345. So there we have the accounts receivable of 3,000 or 6,345. We're going to take the notes receivable off the books. So here it is on the books. It has a debit balance. We're going to take it out by doing the opposite thing to it, a credit. So I'm going to put my cursor in S9, right click and copy. We're going to put that right underneath in J21, right click and paste, one, two, three. The amount then is going to be 6,200. That needs to go off the books. Credit, 6,200. Difference is going to be the interest that is, is earned, the revenue. So revenue account here is going to be the difference. We can do that a couple different ways. I'm going to scroll back over. It's 145 calculated here, or it's what we need, the 6,345 minus the 6,200. I'm going to do that with the plug formula, negative, SUM, double click the sum function, highlight those cells, 3,000 or 6,345 minus the 6,200, giving that 145. That's going to go to a credit to interest revenue. So S18, I'm going to right click and copy. Put that in J22, right click and paste, one, two, three. I'm going to then highlight these two and indent. So I'll highlight these, home tab, alignment, increase the indentation. Then we're going to record this out. So accounts receivable is here. Here it is on the trial balance. 
something's in it. So we're going to double click on U6, uh, go to the end of it, and plus, and point to that 6,345, and enter. So that brings the balance up. Then we're going to go to the notes receivable here. That's here, notes receivable. It's going to go down, double clicking on U9, double click, go to the end of it, and plus, point into that 6,200, bringing the balance down to zero. Then what the interest revenue is here in U18, double clicking U18, going to the end, plus point into that 145 and enter, bringing the balance up and uh, bringing net income up. Note that uh, income is going up, revenue is going up, although we didn't receive any money, no cash received at this point. We earned revenue, haven't uh, gotten it yet, and it's a little, <laughs> a little skeptical as to whether we will, given the fact they haven't paid us yet. But it's going back into the receivable here. We also need to put that in the receivable for MI. It's going to go back on the books. So we're going to put it in X8. Uh, we're just basically recording the same amount uh, by the subsidiary ledger by customer. So that equals this 3,000 or 6,345. Bringing the balance back up. Then, if we look at all the receivables, it sums up to 41,467, which uh, matches the 41,467 here on the trial balance. Next transaction. We're gonna scroll back over and we're gonna see that. What do we have next? So, uh, received payment from MI Company for the, matur uh, the maturity value of the dishonored note plus interest for 45 days beyond the maturity at 7%. And that was uh, 46 days. So, we're gonna, now we're going to do another calculation for MI. MI now just uh, paid us. It's in the receivable for accounts receivable, but because um, of our prior arrangement, they're going to pay us both the, the $21 or the $145 here Plus, they're going to give us uh, interest earned in the extended time period that it's been back in accounts receivable. We'll calculate that interest now. So we're going to say that the debt amount at this point in time is, we're going to scroll over to the subsidiary ledger to see that. So it's this 6,345. So scrolling back over, it's 6,345, 7% interest going to underline that home tab font group underline multiply that out this equals 6,345 times 7 percent enter we're going to multiply that time or divide by the number of days in a year equals 12 months times 30 about 360 days underline that home tab font group underline then we're going to divide that out in F22 by saying equals this 444.15 divided by that 360 F20 divided by F21 or $1.23 a day. And we said that there were how many days have 46 days past due? 46 days past due. Going to underline that. Home tab, font, underline. So then we'll multiply this out. This equals the 123 times the 46 days enter. Now I'm just going to round that to the nearest uh, dollar by saying equals pointing to that 5675. And just that cell is just taking off the uh, pennies here. And that's doing that by the rounding function. So they're still there technically uh, for Excel. So if I saw those, there they are. But we're going to round it to 57. Okay, so now we're going to record the journal entry. We're going to say we got payment. So what's the date on this? One more time. We got, uh, this is on 6-2. Receive payment, the note, interest, uh, receive payment. So 717. 717. So we're going to say is cash affected? Yeah, we got the cash. So cash has a debit balance. We're going to make it to go up by doing the same thing. Another debit. Copying cash, gonna put that on top in J24, right clicking and pasting. One, two, three. Now the amount is gonna be for this uh, 6,345 plus the $57 that we got uh, for the interest. 
So we could do that with a formula, which we may have been, should have been doing before, may make things more specific. So this cell plus uh, this cell and enter. And actually that, that'll make it around it a little bit. So let's not do that actually. <laughs> Probably a reason I didn't do it. So it's actually, we can say this equals, say equals, 6345 plus 57. The reason I don't want to use this cell is because it's actually not that number. Remember, it's really this number. So when we post it, we'll be off by pennies. I'd rather just use round numbers over here. Okay, so then we're going to say that the accounts receivable is going to be the other side of this. So if we scroll back up, we see accounts receivable here. It's going to have to go down. So we're going to do uh, the opposite thing to it as a debit balance. We're going to do the opposite, which is a credit. Copy the accounts receivable. Scrolling back down, we're going to put that in J25, right click and paste, one, two, three. Now the amount's not going to be the 6,402, it's going to be the 3,000, or 6,345, is, is that the right customer? Yeah, 6,345. So this is going to be credit 6,345, difference 6,402 minus 6,345 is that $57. So I'm going to use the negative sum plug function, negative sum of these cells, giving credit 57, that then being interest revenue. Interest revenue has a credit balance. We're going to make it go up doing the same thing to it. Another credit. Right click and copy. Put that in J26. Right click and paste. One, two, three. I'm going to indent these two, highlighting these two. Home tab, alignment, increase indenting, then post it out. Here's the cash on journal entry. Here it is on the trial balance, going to U5, double clicking, going to the end of it, plus scrolling back down just a bit, picking up that 6,402 and enter. So there's that amount. The next one, accounts receivable, credit. Here's the accounts receivable on the trial balance. We're gonna be in column U. U6, double click, go to the end of it, plus scrolling down a bit, picking up that 6,345, bringing accounts receivable down. Then we're going to pick up the uh, interest revenue here, putting it there in U18, double click, go to the end of it, plus there's the 57, and enter. That brings net income up, puts us back in balance. Now we did something to the accounts receivable, so we need to post that same thing as well to the subsidiary ledger. Here's MI owing us money. We're going to be here in column Y9 to take this balance back down. Y9, that's just where it happened to land. So we're going to be here equals, point to that accounts receivable one more time. And that means now that M company doesn't owe us anything at this time, that should put the total we add them all up for all the customers of the subsidiary ledger at 35,122 matching what's on the trial balance.